to see the wreckage up close, to see a freight that is nearly the size of the Eiffel Tower, and to see that same freight with the key bridge resting on top of it, to see shipping containers that were ripped in half as if they were paper mache, to know that out there you have to navigate high winds and electric wires, to go out there and to see it up close, you realize just how daunting a task this is. You realize how difficult the work is ahead of us. With a salvage operation this complex, and frankly, with a salvage operation this unprecedented, you need to plan for every single moment, and every time you take action to move a piece of wreckage, you understand that that requires you to reassess the situation. I'm Rear Admiral Shannon Gilry, speaking on behalf of the Unified Command. As I mentioned last night, our number one priority of the Unified Command is to reopen the Port of Baltimore. And to do that, we've broken that into three phases. Number one phase is reopen the shipping channel. Number two is remove the ship. And number three is to remove the debris from the bridge from the rest of the waterway. We are beginning to make progress on those phases. In the phase one, we talked about that we need to do the assessments of the bridge, both above the waterline and beneath the water. Those assessments continue. As the governor said, we were out there today and we could see the engineers and the divers and the survey boats out there on the water in these difficult wind conditions, doing their job, doing their work to assess that bridge, to figure out how we can cut it up into the pieces we need to be able to lift. And back at the Unified Command, the governor, the commandant, all the elected officials, they could see those engineers working on those very plans. Engineers from the Army Corps of Engineers, Navy Supervisor of Salvage. We had state engineers there. There were some private engineers helping us, and we had some Coast Guard engineers there and they're all working diligently to figure out that right plan to be able to break that bridge up into the right size pieces that we can lift. And the second part of that is we need to get the heavy lift equipment here. And we've been telling you that those cranes are on their way and that equipment's on that way. And behind us, you can see the first of those things that are arriving. They're arriving and they're gonna to continue to arrive for the next several days. And we're gonna continue that planning so that we will be ready to be able to take advantage of that as soon as possible and do it safely. Today, workers began the daunting task of cutting the destroyed bridge into pieces, a critical first step in the urgent effort to reopen the city's blocked port. CBS's Nicole Skanga is there and getting up close to it all with the U.S. Coast Guard. Nicole? Good evening, Mark. Today, our closest look yet at the destruction. CBS News embedded with the U.S. Coast Guard, part of the 24-7 federal and state operation with a central mission to reopen the port. The ninth busiest port in America now at a standstill. The container ship Dolly trapped under an estimated two to 3,000 tons of twisted metal. Before the U.S. Coast Guard can reopen this vital shipping channel, authorities are rushing to clear the debris spanning 700 feet. We're about 250 yards away from the site of the bridge collapse. Behind me, you can see one, two, three cranes poised to lift the wreckage off of the container ship Dolly. A temporary channel is now in the works to get smaller ships moving. If we can open up another one that will help the economy here and move traffic in and out of the Port of Baltimore, even if it's not the deep draft, we want to take advantage of that opportunity. Baltimore-bound container ships now being rerouted to other ports. That cargo will be redistributed between the Port of, port of Virginia, the Port of New York, and the Port of Philadelphia. Baltimore handles more cars and farm equipment than any other port in America. Baltimore is the largest in the nation and certainly by far the largest on the U.S. East Coast. And there isn't a single place that can replace them. The port generates over $5 billion in worker wages, roughly $650 million in state and local tax revenue, and more than 50,000 jobs, including roughly 8,000 port workers, like crane operator John Zafia. We're all wondering how long it's going to take to clear the main channel so we can get ships back in so we can work. 
Maryland lawmakers are now crafting a bill that, if greenlit, would stand up a temporary financial relief program run by the Department of Labor. It's designed to help workers who regularly clock in at the port, and now they're waiting for it to reopen. Mark? Nicole Skanga with new pictures and new reporting. Thanks.